Now, the next phase of the St. Louis Archdiocese All Things New plan begins. We're live with how the focus has now turned to elementary schools. The retail climate for malls in America has changed. Some malls are making that transition, some are not. And feeling like summer here as we kick off the first few days of October, but a change is on the way by the weekend. Metrolink will look a little different today for riders. The new system they're testing out this month and why. Number one in the West with an exclamation point tonight. Best in the West. Tell St. Louis City SC is making Major League Soccer history. For the first time since 1982, St. Louis has a World Series winner. Oh, uh, what a memory. This morning, Adam Wainwright is now a former St. Louis Cardinal. We'll hear from fans, teammates, and from the man himself as the Wayno era comes to an end. This is Today in St. Louis, focused on you. Take a live look right now at Bush Stadium. Ah, the lights are still mm. on, but the season is indeed over. That's all right. We've got a lot to talk about when it comes to our Redbirds. Um, today would be a great day to play baseball, but the season is over. Yeah. Uh, but as the week goes on, we're going to be ready to do some skiing. Yeah. Or <laughs> close to it. I don't least. know what kind of skiing. I just say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like yes, your enthusiasm. And yes. Good yeah. Monday morning, everybody. <laughs> it is October the 2nd. I'm Rennie Knox. And I'm Michelle Lee. We just want to say thanks for waking up with us, including those of you who might be catching us on 5 Plus this morning. It sure felt like the weekend went a million miles an hour, you know? But so fast. Yeah. But mm -hmm. hopefully people will be slow on the road today. Right now it's beautiful. Yeah, right now. Yeah. Right now. Right yeah. now. I love how Paul yeah. describes the traffic. It's beautiful. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. You can tell you're a true traffic. <laughs> <laughs> well, our weather's been a little hot here. It's going to stay that way through the next few days. And we do have changes coming as we go towards the end of the week. No, not cold enough for skiing, but oh. you may need a jacket. We'll get Sweater. there. Sweater. Sweater by that. Yes, we have one month to go before we get into the end of our fall months. So we'll get there. Just, you know, hang on. It's not going to be that cold. Uh, it will be cooling down, though. There's a trough coming in from the west. That's going to be building as we go through the week. And by the time we get into Wednesday and Thursday, we'll have some showers around. And this weekend could be very chilly for some of you. 40s out the door on Saturday morning. We'll talk all about that cool down to come, but still warm today up near 90 degrees. So let's head over to Paul and get an update on our 6 a.m. traffic. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Anthony. I know how it is. You wake up on a Monday morning and the, the few good chemicals are not there even fewer than normal. Well, as you're planning your day, Feel good about the weather right now, especially if you are hitting the road soon. Look at all of this green. It's a map that we uh, kind of look and see. Okay, I'm I'm uh, at Zumbel and 70. I know that we're moving maybe a little bit of construction. What about our friends in Jefferson County moving very, very well. Also, uh, this is a view from one of the MoDOT cameras they have and just wanted you to see volume is light. We'll have more traffic coming in just a few minutes. All right. Thanks so much, Paul. Overnight Gravoy Avenue in South St. Louis is the scene of, of two deadly crashes. The latest happened just after one o'clock this morning on Gravoy at Nebraska. A man was hit by a vehicle and taken to the hospital where he later died. Right now, police are searching for the driver who left the scene. We're also working to learn more about another deadly crash on Gravoy that killed a man. It happened just after nine o'clock last night near Bingham in South St. Louis. That man later died at a hospital. Right now, the St. Louis Archdiocese is moving forward with the next phase of its All Things New plan. Now officials are focused on the elementary schools. Our Mercedes McKay joins us now live in the Central West End with how many of the schools will be impacted. Mercedes? Good morning, Rennie. Starting now through October, church leaders will be meeting with pastors to discuss the future of its parish schools. The Archdiocese of St. Louis says about one third of its elementary schools will go through this consultation process. During these conversations, some schools will be asked to close, while others will enter a quote feasibility analysis phase. The schools were chosen for this process based on enrollment numbers, demographic trends, finances, and location to neighboring parish schools. 
Right now, there are more than 80 elementary schools serving more than 19,000 students in the Archdiocese. Any changes will be announced in early December and will take effect in the 2024-2025 school year. Now, the big question many parishioners have right now is how many schools will this exactly impact? The Archdiocese of St. Louis says they don't have the answer to that question just yet. Hopefully, we'll get that answer in the coming months before December when that deadline hits. Coming up in the next half hour, I'll explain what what will happen if pastors decide to not close its pair schools down? Live in the Central West End, Mercedes McKay, five on your side. Thanks so much, Mercedes. This morning, what used to be a popular destination is turning into an abandoned building. Some area malls really are on the brink of extinction, while others seem to be thriving. Alex Fees is taking a look at whether there is some sort of new formula for malls to make a comeback. Good morning, Alex. Michelle, good morning. That's right. That old formula is not working anymore. We are live at Chesterfield Mall this morning where officials have begun the process of liquidating some items within the mall. Equipment, fixtures, things of that nature. That's a process that will continue over the course of the next year while the mall remains open. You know, if you ask anybody, mention any St. Louis area mall these days, everybody pretty much has an opinion about whether that mall is making it or not. It's the downfall of the mall. Jamestown Mall in North St. Louis County is the most recent victim, but it died long before officials dismantled it. So in this age of internet commerce, how is it that some malls wither while others stay strong? Most successful malls are the ones who have some kind of experience. Webster University finance professor Dr. Mitch Ellison says the malls still in the retail business are the ones surrounded by success. The experience can either be a, a store that's still in vogue, which you, you know, you have your Lululemon stores, your Apple stores. Ellison says malls struggle for a variety of reasons. Buying habits have shifted to online. Many malls now discourage teenagers due to crime and safety concerns. Major department stores are diminished. Sears and J.C. Penney are two examples. And of course, location is key. The closer a mall is to a city center, the worse it performs. Take Chesterfield Mall. It's getting out of retail and going into real estate. The space is being converted to mixed use, allowing for retail, offices, and more than 2,000 apartments. Uh, the hope at this point is that demolition on the mall would start end of next year. While some die, others thrive. West County Center maintains a steady stream of customers, even on an uneventful weekday. The Mills Mall, St. Clair Square, South County, Mid Rivers, Galleria, Plaza Frontenac, shoppers know which malls are making it. Ellison mentioned another retail economic strategy you'll find in malls that have survived, clustering. Successful companies want to cluster around other successful companies, and where that happens, that's where you have a successful mall. And Ellison says discount malls are still generally thriving. Another move that many malls are making these days is to schedule other events that will draw people in, things like farmers markets, fashion shows, or concerts. Now coming up in our next half hour, shoppers will weigh in on the secret of success at West County Center in De Pere. Live this morning in Chesterfield, Alex Fees, five on your side. All right, let's get you updated on our weather this week. We do have some changes on the way beginning towards midweek. In the meantime, it's still be very warm, uh, feeling more like summer today, tomorrow and Wednesday. So the shorts for the kiddos as they head off to the uh, bus stop. It'll be up near 90 degrees today through Wednesday. Then once we get into Wednesday evening and Thursday showers in the forecast, that'll bring a drop in our temperatures behind the cold front that moves in this weekend. will certainly feel like fall. We're talking 40s in the morning and 60s in the afternoon, Saturday and Sunday. We'll take a deeper dive into that and show you the future cast. That's coming up after this break. Soccer history made for St. Louis City SC. It's a season to remember as our expansion club scores a major win. We'll tell you what's next. And the end of the Cardinal season ends on a high note. The special ceremony to celebrate the career of Adam Wainwright. Now this morning you may have noticed some of us wearing pink. That's because October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And to support the efforts of the Susan G. Coleman Foundation, our partners for more than 25 years now, we want to encourage you to wear pink and donate to Coleman. Just go to kck.com slash pink.